Chalker UI is a CSS library or framework for React, and it helps you bootstrap your applications by not having to worry so much about CSS. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this crash course. So I'm just starting off with an empty folder and I'm going to take you and show you everything you need to know. So the first thing we're going to do is run create react app. And I'm going to call, I'm just going to run it inside of this folder. Okay. Now that we have that done, I'm just going to go over here to the chalk UI website and click get started and click on create react app. And here they have the command so you can copy and Honestly, guys, no one expects you to remember this type of stuff. So they just have it here and you can just copy it. I'll have it in the description so you can do the same thing. All right, so now let's just get started. And I'm just going to run yarn start to start up this application. And so now I'm going to go in these folders right here. And I'm going to delete all this stuff right here that we don't really need. Okay, so the first thing you want to do to get actually start Chalker UI is you need to actually wrap your application in the Chalker provider component. So here we'll just go here and wrap our application in this component like that. And so now any child of this component will have access to all the functionality that lives in Chalker UI. And that's pretty cool. You may have noticed I went in dark mode. That's because um, I've used Chalker UI before and they have a dark mode setting that you can do. So it's actually saved in my local storage. So I'll just delete that right now. And you see, it should be back in light mode. I'll show you how to do dark mode later. Don't worry about that. Okay, so let's get started in our app. So I'm just gonna delete this class name right here and actually gonna delete all of this. So now we have an empty application and I'm gonna show you the first most important probably um, concept of Chalk UI and that's the whole box component. So here we want to render a box and a box is basically like their version of a div. And you might be thinking, well, why can't I just use a div then? Well, Chalk UI has a lot of props that they take in, which are very useful. So one would be something like height and you could put here how much height. So we can put a hundred pixels width. We can put a hundred pixels and background so you can just put bg or background color and here we can put it as red and see now we have a red box right over here and you see that when you start typing you get um an autocomplete so instead of doing background color we can just do bg and that'll work just the same and that's the really powerful thing about chalk ui that the props are very easy to just stick in there and you get something. So for example, here you can do view height or sorry, view width and here would be view height. And then now it's going to be a full screen uh, box. If you ever want to change something and it's not, or you don't know if it's one of the props or it's not showing up, you can always just pass in the SX prop. And it takes in an object and this is like the manual way of styling the component and then you can put any styles here so you can put um background color and set that to green and see it overrides anything so this is like the fallback basically and so let's take a look over here in our html here you see this div right here and this is basically our box all components are almost all of them from Chucky Ride taking this prop called as and you can basically change the HTML tag of this component by passing it in here so I can pass in span and now it's a span and now I can give it a display of block and it goes back to how it was before you can pass more than just strings here you can pass in an actual component and that's actually very useful so this box can actually render as an entirely different component. So you can pass in a link, right? And then now it's an A tag with all the functionality that comes with Chalk UI. So you can actually render one component as another one, but keep the styles of the first one, but the functionality of the second one. And that's super useful. 
So I'm just going to get rid of um, all this background color right here. And I'm going to show you something else. So there's something called a stack component. And this basically lets us stack elements vertically or horizontally. So all you got to do here is pass a direction. And here we'll have a direction of column. And then here we'll have two boxes like that. And then we'll give each box a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. And we'll do the same thing here. And so here I'm going to pass them a background color. So BG equals red. And I'll do the same thing over here. And see we have um, these two boxes stacked on top of each other and we can configure the spacing here so we can say a spacing of four and it has more spacing a spacing of 12 has more spacing or you can do it manually so we can do four rem and it goes like that but they have their own um, units that they believe are the best so i suggest using those first and that brings me to the next component and that would be one called a V stack. So you see here how we have a stack with direction of column. They have one that does that automatically called a V stack. And I have to import that. It's basically the same thing, except it centers everything horizontally and it has it stacked vertically. So it's basically just like if you did a flex box and then you had it a flex direction column and then a line item center. So it centers it horizontally but it's um, displaying it in a vertical line, in a column. And when I do, there's another one called H stack, and you might already know what that does, basically the opposite. So centers it vertically, but I, it's not showing, so I have to make this a height of 100 view height, so that you can see. So it centers it vertically and has it in a row. So here, I'm gonna show you the next component, is a text component and here basically is you write your text so hello world there's your text and then it takes in these props one called font size so you can say font size to rem and I believe they also take extra large as a font size so you can say small medium large extra large and two extra large or four yeah four extra large so and then if that's not big enough you can just go in and i think they go up to six yeah it goes up to six and if that's not big enough you can always just like do it yourself so 10 rem but why would you ever do that and it takes in many other props too so here's a list of all the props it takes and this takes in all the normal props as well, just like all the other components in Chalk UI. And so there's another component, one called heading. And this is basically meant for like heading and you see how it's bold and all that. And so this one also takes a size. It's not font size, this one just takes size and you can specify, say small or medium, large, you see where I'm going with here. You can go up to four, four extra large. I think it even goes up to six extra large. No, just four. But yeah, here's all the sizes for the heading. And this renders, I'm pretty sure as an H1, no, as an H2. But you can always go here and do as H1 and it'll render as an H1. So you can do that for some SEO or whatever you need to do that for. So here, just put it a size of the large. And so the next component that I'm going to show you is the button component. Here, we're going to put click me like so. And it's showing up down here. So I'm actually going to put it up here and delete all this stuff right here. And then in this H stack to get it centered horizontally, all I have to do would be 
justify center and then it centers horizontally because it's actually a flex direction row so we need to justify center it centers horizontally so you see we have this button here let me try to zoom in in my browser oops that's not the right one okay okay oh all right so you see this button here and I hover over it it gets kind of like gray a little and when I click it it gets that outline so you can change this over here this takes one called variant and you could specify a variant and then they have variant solid so that's the default variant but also one called variant outline and see it gets like clear in the middle and it just has an outline around it but you also would want to give it a color scheme so let's say we want it to have a color scheme of teal and see now it's a little more obvious what's going on so it has a, a variant of outline that's the behavior and when i give it a variant of solid there it is it's solid also has some other variants here like um ghost we'll see what that does it's basically like only the text is the color and there's a very slight slight hint or hue when you hover over it but yeah there's many things you can do with chalk ui so here you can do a link and then it's kind of not even a button almost it's almost like a link and so let me show you the next component one called input so this is as you can guess just like a text input that you can type into now i'm actually gonna change this here to a v stack so that it can be here and here we'll just go like that and you can pass in any prop that you would normally so placeholder can be enter username right works just like any other input but it has some default styles attached to it obviously as you know it takes in props like with uh, 50 percent and then the width will be 50 percent of its container and that brings me to the next thing i wanted to show you so instead of make manually putting widths um track UI has this thing called container so over here in this parent box we can get rid of all these props and just render a container and make sure i close that so we can just render a container and see it has the same exact behavior as the box did. But if you notice here, um, our input, I'll just make it a little more explicit. It has a width of 100%, but it has like a little gap on the edges. And when I make the window bigger, it gets to a point where the input doesn't even get bigger anymore. And that's the whole functionality of the container. So. And just to make the functionality a little more obvious, I'm going to change, I'm going to actually put a box in here and I'm going to give it a width of a hundred percent, a height of a hundred pixels and a background of red, just to make things a little more obvious. So you see this box right here. So this box, it's width is a hundred percent of its container. So that means that our container finishes when this box when this box is cut off on the sides and when we inspect our html we see here we have a container and it has a max width of 60 characters so we can go here and change the max width to small and it gets even smaller we can change it to medium and large and that's really useful when you want to do custom layouts so this can be extra large and see it gets to a point where it stops growing and then obviously it shrinks with the window so container is very useful i use it a lot when i'm doing my projects so all of this might be a little bit harsh on the eyes or maybe hard to see personally i like dark mode so i'm going to show you how to do dark mode so all i gotta do is go here and search for color mode they call it color mode and then it shows you everything you need to do so the first thing we got to do is make a file called theme.js here we just import extend theme then we make a theme object and then we do export default 
extend theme and pass in our theme just like that and so here in our theme we'll have a config object and then here it'll say initial color mode is set to we'll put system and then use system color mode is set to true and then over here in our app or in our index.js we have to import our theme so import theme from theme.js and then we go here and pass it in as a prop and then we do theme.config no just like that so theme we pass in our theme so we just pass in our theme and then And we have to put the theme full file in our source directory. Okay. And yes, we'll update the imports. And so now we have a dark theme because over here I specified use color use color mode of system and my computer's color mode is set to dark. You can put this to light and this to false and then it'll be light or you can put this to true. So the default will be light, but then if a user user's browser or system has a color mode set to dark, it'll detect it and use that instead. So that's how you can do that. And let's make a button so users can switch between light mode and dark mode. To do that, you would go here and render a color mode script like so. And then you pass in initial color mode equal to theme.config.initial color mode like that and then over here in our app we'll just make a button that says color and then the on click so here we would have to actually use a hook and it we destructure because it returns an object and it has color mode and toggle color mode and it's called the use color mode hook and then over here in the on click all we got to do is call toggle color mode like that and so this button is down here so when we click it you see it toggles the color mode and obviously you can put like an icon in here Chalky UI has icons you can search up icons and you can import their icons library and then use any of these icons for that. So they have a moon icon, they have a sun icon that you can use for that. So let's use all the knowledge we've gained to actually create a simple login page. So I'm going to delete all of this and I'm going to show you how quickly you can make a simple uh, UI using Chalk UI. So this I'm going to set to medium as a container. And I'm actually going to render a heading in here it says log in. And this is going to have a text align of center. So to actually get this centered in the middle of the page, I'm just going to render a V stack. And I'm going to call here align equals center. And then I'm going to make my whole login page a child of that. And then the, the V stack will be height is a hundred percent or view height. I could do justify. All right. So yeah, justify center. So yeah, I can just do a hundred percent and the container. I can make sure to give it a height of a hundred view height like that. And then here I can just have an input like so, and then import that. And then here I have the placeholder of enter username. And then this one will have enter password and then type of password. And then I have to remember to spell placeholder right, or else it's not going to work. And here we can put dots like that. 
let's say I want this to be these inputs to be a little bit smaller or actually I think my browser is like zoomed out zoomed in all the way so I think that's why it's so big and let's say these things are a little too close to each other I can go in the V stack and pass in the spacing give a spacing of three or a spacing of six there we go I think four is fine and then down here we want a button and then submit and then color scheme will be blue and then the variant will be outline like that and so we can customize this even more by doing a width on this button of a hundred percent like that and yeah that's pretty much it and so then we can add a little button up here that says anything a question mark or an icon and then give it a position of absolute and give it an inset of zero zero auto auto and I'll just stick it in the top right then we can give it a margin which M of four or two and then we can do we can import the color mode hook so to toggle the color mode like that and then over here we can do on click is equal to toggle color mode and there we go we have this uh, user interface pretty fast that was like what two three minutes and we have this login page right here i introduced all of these different props and that's really the beauty of tracker ui they pretty much have any prop that you would need so instead of pause like pos they have position but then when i'm doing that and i type in pos it already shows up here and you know just by using um an educated guest you can tell that this would stand for position and would stand for margin or you can hover over it and it tells you and if you don't know or if you're not sure you can go to their website over here at tracker-ui.com and just search up so i can search up the button component and here it shows me some examples on how to use it right with some more complicated examples with loading screens everything here it shows me and then when you scroll all the way down it shows you all the props that it takes and when we scroll down it takes a size which I didn't I don't think I showed you it takes color scheme I showed you that but it doesn't mention margin anywhere here if you look closely here it says it composes the box component so you can pass all its props that means you can pass all the props from the box component to this component so you would search up box like that and scroll all the way down and then here you see a bunch of examples using all these props of course if a prop that you want doesn't show up here just start typing it and it'll probably show up so i can put padding right and it shows up right there or you can do pr which is the same thing right and then here it will have some padding on the right and this these documentations are really good like here a center component it has basically anything you need to get started with your application now let's say you want to make a modal you can search up modal right here modal dialog it shows you everything you need to know to make a modal with examples this stuff is really really good and you can literally just copy all of this like copy all of this into here obviously you would need to import all of this like that and then use this hook that they have here or where was it yeah it was right here and now watch down here see now we have a modal so it's really really easy to just make things with this library and i love it and i hope you did as well 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day.